Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. Imagine you're deciding whether to drive to work or take public transportation. Or maybe you're a factory owner looking for ways to cut production costs. What you might not realize is that your decisions can have broader impacts on the people around you, affecting air quality, traffic congestion, or even the well-being of others. In economics, these ripple effects are called externalities. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of externalities, what they are, how they impact society, and why they matter in everyday decisions made by businesses, individuals, and governments. By the end of this video, you'll see how externalities shape policies and markets in ways you may have never noticed. Section 1. What are externalities? Let's start with the basics. An externality occurs when the actions of individuals or businesses affect third parties who aren't directly involved in the transaction. These effects can be positive or negative. Section 2. Negative externalities, hidden costs. Now, let's take a closer look at negative externalities, where the hidden costs fall on others, not just the decision maker. A common example is pollution from industrial production. When a factory emits pollutants, it harms public health and the environment. However, the factory itself doesn't directly bear these costs, the nearby residents and society do. This creates a market failure, as the factory's profits don't reflect the true social costs of its actions. Traffic congestion is another example of negative externality. Each additional car on the road slows down traffic, increasing travel time for everyone. The individual driver doesn't bear the full cost of the congestion they contribute to, instead, the community at large does, through lost time, extra fuel use, and increased pollution. Section 3, Positive Externalities, Hidden Benefits Now, let's look at the flip side, positive externalities, where the benefits extend beyond the individual or business making the decision. A great example is education. When someone earns a college degree, they don't just benefit themselves. They become more productive workers, contribute to innovation, and help grow the economy. These benefits extend to employers, co-workers, and even future generations, making education a powerful force for societal progress. Another great example is vaccination. When a person gets vaccinated, they reduce the risk of spreading diseases to others, helping protect vulnerable individuals in the community who cannot be vaccinated. This broader public health benefit, reduced hospitalizations and disease outbreaks, is a positive externality that goes beyond the vaccinated individual. Section 4. How Governments Address Externalities Now we understand both positive and negative externalities. So how do we deal with them? One way is through government intervention. Governments can step in to correct the inefficiencies caused by externalities, making sure that businesses and individuals account for the true costs and benefits of their actions. For negative externalities, governments often impose taxes or regulations. For example, carbon taxes are imposed on businesses to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. These taxes make companies pay for the pollution they generate, pushing them to adopt cleaner technologies. For positive externalities, governments can offer subsidies or other incentives. For instance, governments often subsidize renewable energy sources like solar and wind power, since they provide societal benefits by reducing pollution and dependence on fossil fuels. Section 5. Challenges in Addressing Externalities While government intervention can help correct externalities, it's not always easy. There are trade-offs to consider, when a government imposes taxes on activities that generate negative externalities, such as pollution, it aims to make producers bear the full social cost of their actions. This internalizes the externality by encouraging businesses to reduce harmful activities or invest in cleaner technologies. However, these taxes increase production costs for businesses, which often pass those costs on to consumers as higher prices. Additionally, companies may become less competitive, especially if they operate in international markets where competitors don't face similar taxes. As a result, businesses may resist these taxes, fearing reduced profitability, job losses, or a shift in production to countries with more lenient regulations. On the other hand, when governments offer subsidies to encourage activities that create positive externalities, like education or renewable energy, they make those beneficial activities more affordable and attractive. However, subsidies can strain government budgets, potentially leading to deficits or forcing cuts in other areas, like healthcare or infrastructure. If subsidies are not carefully managed, they can also create inefficiencies in the market, leading to overproduction or reduced incentives for innovation. 
For example, companies receiving renewable energy subsidies may become overly reliant on government support and less motivated to reduce costs or improve technology independently. Finding the right balance between taxing negative externalities and subsidizing positive ones is crucial for policymakers. The challenge lies in promoting socially beneficial behavior without overburdening consumers or taxpayers, distorting markets, or hindering economic growth. This balancing act requires setting taxes and subsidies at appropriate levels to internalize externalities effectively, without placing undue financial pressure on governments or creating inefficiencies that undermine the long-term sustainability of industries. Section 6. Conclusion. In summary, externalities are an essential concept in economics because they help us understand the hidden costs and benefits of our actions. Whether it's the air pollution from a factory or the social benefits of vaccination, externalities remind us that our choices don't exist in a vacuum, they affect others, often in ways we can't immediately see. By using tools like taxes, subsidies, and regulations, governments can help steer markets toward more efficient outcomes that benefit society as a whole. So, the next time you take public transportation or invest in renewable energy, remember, you might just be creating a positive externality that benefits everyone. What do you think about how externalities should be managed? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more insights into economics. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.